So I hope you're all up to date with your varying streaming services. I know I certainly am. Now, today we're going to look at something that Microsoft warns very heavily against in their documentation and says that you should only do if you know what you're doing. And that is playing with the registry. Now, for the purposes of this demo, what we're going to do is create a new registry key so that we do not destroy our test OS in the process of giving this example. Um, but obviously, you would usually use this with existing keys. So here we've created a key, and I'm going to do that thing that they tell you never to do, which is play with the permissions. So what I'm going to do is remove the local admin group, since the currently logged in user is a member of the admin group. And the result of this is that I should lose permissions to the key. So as an example, if I try to do something reasonably normal or easy, like, ooh, I don't know, uh, rename the key as an example. So if I do attempt to rename, I should get a permissions error telling me that basically I no longer have permissions to the registry key to make those modifications. Now with that in mind, let's go ahead and get into our demo on the various different ways that we can try to modify that key. Now, first off, I'm going to look at probably the most common example, which is um, the example you'll find littered across the internet. So the first one is to get the permissions of the key. Here we can see quite happily that we do not have the permissions, but at least the permissions are listed. Uh, then try to create a brand new security object, telling it what it is that we would like it to be. Then setting that security object into the set access rule. This some of you may see familiar from um, the earlier video that we did with file permissions. And then finally apply that uh, to the registry key. Now the reason that I'm going to show you this as a failure, which you'll see in a second, is because we don't have permissions to the key in order to set values to the key. So this brings us to example number two. What happens if I don't have access to the registry key in order to modify the registry key? Because if I had modified permissions, this would have worked, but I don't. So we have example number two. Now this is the part where we have to refer to .NET objects in order to kind of circumnavigate that function because the function here is just a cut down version or encapsulated version of what we're about to do. So what we have here is that we're going to use the Microsoft Win32 dot registry uh, local machine dot sub key software. I won't list it all out, but let's just say it's a very long list. And then we're going to tell it explicitly how we're going to set the permissions. Now the permissions themselves here do not need to be listed out line by line as I've done here. They could be listed into a single line. Um, it's just much easier to read this way because you can see then what the inherited permissions, control permissions, etc. are. And if I go ahead and hit enter, uh, that has now changed the permissions for the administrators group. So we can now see that the administrators group is back there. It has full permissions. So that was completely successful as expected. So what happens if we go back to our earlier example? Now our earlier example failed and the reason it failed primarily is because we didn't have permissions. So what happens now because we do have permissions? So obviously adding administrators kind of an oxymoron here because we already have permission. So let's use the users group that doesn't have admin access, although it did exist, but not with full admin. Um, we can now go here and we can go look at the users group and say, okay, well, it previously had read permissions and now it has full access. Now there's one minor detail, and this is the other thing that I kind of found annoying with uh, a lot of the blog entries. If you were to use the command they list, it would give you the uh, key value only, not sub key values. Now the result here is that you could change only that one entry and nothing below it. So just like uh, the file permissions, if we want to modify a further degree of values in terms of making sure inheritance and other things are on, we need to add it to the full command. So this gives you the example of what it could look like earlier. And there is now a full listing. And if we go there, we should be able to see the permissions, including all the subkey permissions, are now listed. 
which is a much better way for this to be looking. Now, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, you know what to do. If not, well, I'm sure there's another one out there for you.